first leaders debate. What did you think, Fraser? Who came out of top, in your opinion? I think Rishi Sunak probably won on points. Yeah. Pretty split decision. And the YouGov poll showed that. The YouGov poll immediately afterwards had 51-49. Yeah. Um, but that's of the people that were watching. This was not a debate that had the nation on the edge of the seat. Um, I don't think it really suited either person. They had very different styles. Um, it was a blow uh, to Starmer, but a minor one. Um, not the knockout one that Sunak really needs to change the overall narrative of this campaign. I found it quite infuriating viewing. I have to say, you know, the PMQs were only 15 minutes and this was an hour of them back and forthing. And at one point when Julie Etchingham, who was moderating it, was forced to intervene like they were in the play playground and asked them to tone it down, lower their voices, I thought that that was um, a little worrying. I mean, it reminded me, I suppose, a bit more of the kind of American presidential debates uh, in that way, although without the gravitas to storytelling that I would say that American presidential candidates have. And that is what I think is key here, that I don't feel from either of them we're seeing, even though Rishi is PM, we're seeing that, that real vision of change, of, of new beginnings. It's all sort of carping at each other. Do, do you agree? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it's it's fundamentally an argument over the premise of the question that's being asked at the election. So <laughs> you will see Starmer again and again try and uh, ride that wave of change, which he yeah. isn't really leading. Uh, he's just no, surfing off the back. Know, yeah. um, and Sunak is in a much more difficult position to try and argue that the plan is working while recognising where the various different plans of the last 14 years have fallen down. So it's it's really an argument about what the, what the question that the electorate should be answering is. Yeah. It feels more academic almost. And, you know, academia was never made for television. Um, I mean, I thought, I thought it was interesting just looking at who the, who the media thought won. You know, I was reading um, a, a piece in The Guardian that, that likened Rishi to, to a cocksure apprentice contestant, um, whereas The Telegraph called it his delivery extremely confident, as you would uh, imagine. Um, and, and for Starmer, the biggest criticism seems to seems to be the lack of the plan. What is the vision? What is at the centre of this change? Rather than constantly going on about the for, for past, past 14 years, what are you going to bring that's different? Yeah. Well, I think um, both of them have experimented with different styles mm. uh, in the past. If you look at the... Um, uh, the announcement that the PM made when he called the election, obviously all the attention was on the fact it was in the middle of a rainstorm and you could hear music blaring from Whitehall. But that was quite a flat speech that mm. was attempting to be somber and to have gravitas. And it just sounded a bit boring. Um, Starmer always has that um, as a little bit of the, the barrister in him, sort of um, plodding, measured, measured yeah. style. Um, but actually, if you look at his conference speech from last year, that was very, very good in setting out a very clear diagnosis of a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that any, uh, either of them have, have got a, a default style that is really comfortable for them. Um, and uh, yeah, the debate didn't really give them much space to break out of their comfort zones. I, I always find it really interesting watching these things, just to look at a little bit of the body language and some of those sort of verbal and visual tics. And those that I noticed uh, this week were firstly with, with Rishi, that nervous laughter. And I remember an interview he did with Francine Lacroix and Bloomberg, where he kept doing that nervous laugh and then coming back with um, a sort of defensive response. And it really puts you off, in my opinion, as a viewer. And I wonder whether that will be something that, that either he thinks about, his media advisors help him work on, because I do think that that's quite off-putting. And then in terms of Starmer, that, as you just said, that sort of loyally measured tone can come across as a bit dull and, and breaking out of that and being inspiring. So yet you make it such a good comment when you talk about the, the, the speech at the party conference last year, just elevating. Um, in terms of the other visuals that I spotted rather than the verbals, blink rate. Hmm. So Keir, Sir Keir was blinking a lot, particularly when he felt under pressure. And at one point, he totally closes his eyes, you know, that kind of retreat defeat. Whereas probably because Rishi has, has faced these things before, maybe he feels more confident. He, his eyes appeared to be open. He seemed quite measured. So from that perspective, he did win uh, in terms of that, that kind of visual tick. Yeah. I think the, the interesting thing with the TV debates is they're still 
a relatively comparatively new phenomenon yeah. in, in British politics. And even though we've had them since 2010 across all the elections we've had, they've never really been in a consistent format. So the, the electorate can't really keep up with how many we're having, whether we're having them head to head, seven ways. How many are we having? We're not entirely <laughs> sure yet. Um, we know that there will be another head to head between Sunak and Starmer towards the end of the campaign. Um, but the broadcasters are putting on uh, some some versions of debates where they have representatives from the parties mm -hmm. rather than all the party leaders on stage. And that's always a back and forward from the parties about how much airtime do they want to give uh, to put their guys uh, right in the headlights um, and right in the firing line from all the minor parties when they come in and try and take shots. But I don't think that there's a consistent format for these debates. I don't think that they're, they're genuinely part of the election cycle, the decision-making cycle in a way that they are in the US where they've had them for decades. And yeah. um, there are a lot of people who only tune into those debates. And that's the only thing that they will make their decision on. Um, whereas in this country, as we were saying at the start, just under 5 million people watching. I mean, you think that the Euros in a couple of weeks' time, there's going to be significantly more people watching those and, and, yeah. and certainly be more interested in the outcome. Um, but that, that comes from 7 million uh, watching the Boris Corbyn debates, where you've got two leaders who definitely were painted in primary colours compared to Sunak and Starmer. Um, and all the way back to 2010, when actually everyone had thought that this would be a natural uh, environment for David Cameron, and he struggles. He was a bit like a, a rabbit in the headlights. So um, they, they don't feel like they, they feel like they're part of the grammar of mm -hmm. a campaign, um, but they're not the be-all and end-all. Four more weeks to go. As you just said, many more debates to come and many more opportunities to make uh, decisions. And I think that we've got a dedicated hub. Yeah, that's right. So we've got a Set Newgate election hub. That's the place to go to for all of our insight and analysis uh, all the way up to polling day and beyond uh, when we know the result uh, after the 4th of July. And we'll be posting all about that on our LinkedIn page as well. So do follow us there, Set Newgate UK.